this go on, you know? I mean, for Thurm, Reggie's not that bad, you know? Half the time, he doesn't even remember what he said because he doesn't know what the hell he's saying in the first place. It's a horse's ass. Why don't you let me arrange a sit down? But don't give me that look. He sent you to tell me this? No, I just think it ought to be done. What do you think, a dinner? As long as he pays. Monday Night Baseball, the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox, live from Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. Famous old Fenway Park in Boston for the Yankees and Red Sox, and it's absolutely jammed to its ultimate capacity. And hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. I'll be calling the play tonight. Joining with me, Howard Cosell and Bob Euchre. And it's almost, well, it's like an October night here because this is a ball game that means a great deal for both teams because it is a long-standing rivalry. To enlarge on that point, here is Howard Cosell. Thank you very much, Keith. You're exactly right. Who can forget May 20th a year ago, the big brawl between the two teams? And then you talk about temper, Keith. What about the Yankees? The sleeping giant, the time bomb that seems to have the power there somewhere, but hasn't meshed, hasn't had the ability to detonate. And there are many reasons perhaps why, including the tempers on their own team. Munson against Jackson or Jackson against Munson. Martin against the owner or the owner against Martin. Martin against the press. Some of those matters you'll be hearing about directly tonight. We look for an enthusiastic, exciting game. Hopefully the fans will be in control of themselves. Reggie had a little uh, trouble getting adjusted to everyone over here during spring training, you know, and uh, I tried to make him feel fit in. Uh, I tried to make him feel just the way he wanted to and help out in every way. And uh, all of a sudden, a couple weeks ago, I read this article uh, in the paper, in a magazine, a four-page article, you know, it just ripped me pretty good. But I have no ill feelings towards Reggie and whatever he thinks of me personally, well, that's the way he feels. Now, I can't say this, uh, any animosity I feel towards Reggie, I'm not going to let it affect myself or the way I play. I'm not going to let it affect the team. I like to put on Yankee pinstripes. I like to play baseball, and that's what I'm going to go out there and do. Three game comment. The Thurman Munson, the Yankees go down the ball, throws and gets him. Throw to two down. Here's Reggie. This man gets it everywhere he goes. He's having a very difficult time in New York where he said they would name a candy bar after. Reggie hitting only 215 against left handers, but this one is a shot to right. We're back. On May 23rd against the Red Sox, Reggie hit a home run, went to the dugout, didn't shake hands. Today he is. And before the game, I talked to Reggie Jackson about this handshaking incident. He said this. Believe me, people wouldn't really want to talk about it. But, you know, it was something I did do. I'm not proud of it. I uh, struggled with my social adjustment here or uh, getting involved with the ball club for the first couple of months. 
And I made concessions, and I should have, and I'm supposed to. And uh, being a good Christian, that's the way it's supposed to be, to make adjustments and get along. And I fell down one day, and uh, I didn't want to shake anybody's hand because I guess I wanted to say, hey, I don't have to if I don't want to. It was not the right thing to do. I made an apology to each individual guy in the ball club, and I owed the club that apology. I did it. What else can I say about it? So that's Reggie's comment on the handshaking incident. He's having a big night on national television to answer everything that he feels is being done to him. Here in the top of the ninth inning, the crowd beginning to roar now as the home club has its last at bat coming up, trailing the Yankees five. Hit up the middle. It's in there for a base hit. It's taken on a bounce by Mickey Rivers. The throw coming to the plate. He's out. Butch Hobson ran a shortstop set. He's up with it and throws him out. The game is over. The Yankees beat the Boston Red Sox 5-4. The only way for the killer to leave this special torment is to give himself up to me, if he trusts me, or to the police and receive both help and safety. The time to do it, however, is now. Let me ask you something, Reg. Do you think I'm jealous of you? Why are you asking me that? I think what Thurman's trying to... Fran, you wanted us to talk. We're talking. Seriously. <clears throat> Name one thing that you have that I'd want. I don't know, Thurman. Well, you can't, because there's nothing. I live in the same town I grew up in. I got a beautiful wife. I got three great kids. We got friends back in Canton we've had since high school. Real friends. That's what I go home to. That's who I am. A lot of people look up to you, Reg, and maybe they should because you're a hell of a ball player. That's not why people look up to me. Look, we're different people. We want different things, right? But there's one thing that we both do want. To win. And we'll both do whatever it takes, right? Yeah. I don't want to fight with you, Reg. But I don't like you. New York, New York. Still the world center for finance, the arts, communication. The Colossus on the Hudson. But some were afraid New York might sink beneath the Hudson these past few years, threatened by bankruptcy, unemployment, and crime. So now, as New Yorkers get ready to vote in September, Mayor Abraham Beam is in bad trouble. I'm confident we can make this a better city in which to live and work, and that we can improve the quality of life here in our city. His principal opponent is the lady in the floppy hat. Congresswoman Bella Abzug. And one of the things you have to know about all the polls, they not only show that I'm leading, but they also show that of all the candidates, only one person has been regarded by them as a leader. Well, what are we talking, 30, 40 clubs in Queens alone? No, you do not have to tell me you don't have enough manpower, because I know we don't have enough manpower, and I don't care. We need a unit on each one. Babka, you know a disco on Northern Boulevard? It's got a big E on it. It's Elephant. Or Elephus. Elephus. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Uh, Wait, yeah, we got anybody working it? Yeah, a couple of times a week, maybe, but we're spread pretty thin. So you'll do me a favor. Get somebody out there? Got a reason? No, just my gut. Get somebody on it? Yeah, uh, we'll work it ourselves. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You no, know, he has me hitting it in the nine hole. He keeps taking the bat out of my hands. It's like Martin thinks I'm the only guy on the team who can lay down a bunt. 
If he doesn't start letting me swing away, I'm coming home. No, I do mean it. I don't care what my contract says. You got hair growing out your ears. What's with white guys in them ear hairs, huh? I mean, you see Yogi? He got like Sherwood Forest in there. Who are you talking to anyway? My wife. Oh, Mrs. Bucky Dent. Hey, your old man is a cheap son of a bitch. All right, do you mind? I'm trying to have a private conversation here. Could you not do that? Could you just go away? Well, I ain't no need to get your panties in a bunch. I'll leave you alone. But let me get that 150 so I can get to the track. All right. I know what I'm not want. Oh. Hey, Reg. Buck? I like the way you've been handling the bat lately, Buck. I know you're pissed at how many times I've made you give yourself up in the last couple of weeks, but it's nothing personal. Like I said, you're good with the bat, Buck. So you missed a pitch on the suicide squeeze. That happens. It's nobody's fault. I called it because I was going for a big inning. Gives you the best chance to win. That's always been part of my approach. It was the right move at the time, wasn't it, Reg? You uh, asking my honest opinion? Yeah. It's June, and that kind of thing can wear at your confidence, so uh, no, I wouldn't have bunted him. Son of a bitch for not hustling. So how many miles you got on that thing? Hey, Reg, turn around. Jackson doesn't know it yet. And we're liable to see a little display of temper right here. I remember when this happened once to Joe DiMaggio. Casey Stengel wanted to send Cliff Mapes in for Joe DiMaggio, and Joe refused to come off the field. Look at what the hell's going on? That's good. There's 50 billion people out there. I don't care if you're Babe Ruth, you don't hustle, you don't play. Babe, you don't get my good job. You're your ass. That's what I want to do. You what? Well, come do it then. Come do it then. Come do it, you used up old man. I'm being left. I'm being left. I'm being left. I'm being left. I'm being Fire him immediately. Sooner than that. The man is a disgrace, Gabe. He just lost complete control of himself on national television. You saw him. You saw what he said. For God's sake, what kind of example is that to set for America's youth? It's a disgrace. You fire him right now. George, we don't need a firing. What we need is a ceasefire. I'll meet with Martin and Jackson in the morning. No, that's not good enough for me. You fire him right now. George, if you fire Billy now, I can't be responsible for the consequences. No one talks to me like that. No one. They should have let him come at me. I'd have broken the son of a bitch in half. The nerve to talk about my ego. My ego? It's not my ego, it's his that can't take it. He can't handle a black man with my ability and my intellect. It offends him, Fran. I mean it, it offends every racist cell in his body. And you know what's sad? I mean, really sad. If he just took a second to look, he would see how sensitive I am. Because this hurts me, Fran. I know everybody thinks, oh, hey, Reggie Jackson, he's a big star. Nothing gets to him. But I am a deeply sensitive man. I mean, hey, look, I've made mistakes. All right, I am man enough to admit it. But I didn't do anything to deserve that. I mean, you saw it, right? 
I didn't do anything wrong. Why does everyone have to judge me? He's done this on purpose, you know. Not just today, but everything. He has turned everyone against me. I mean, just wait. Tomorrow, the papers will say that it's my fault, that I started it. It's not fair, friend. He attacks me, and if I beat on him, as I should have, I'm the bully. I try to walk away, you know, with some, some dignity, and I'm a coward. Why is this happening to me? You know what I think? Reggie. What do you think, friend? I think you ought to clear the hell out of here before he comes back in and it gets worse. How could it get any worse? In a bizarre scene out at Fenway today, Reggie Jackson and Billy Martin nearly came to blows in full view of the Red Sox crowd when Martin lifted Jackson in the middle of the game and replaced him with Paul Blair. Given the turmoil in the Yankee clubhouse, speculation is that one of them will have to go. Don't worry. I don't take no guff from no one, Mom. How's the ma? So you've seen Reggie since he left the dugout? He knows where to find me. Yeah? And then what happens? About the size of a man in a fight, though. The size of a fight in a man. Oh. Oh. I don't know. Maybe I'll never get a handle on myself in this game. Every day I played, I woke up scared to death. I wouldn't measure up. But I know one thing for sure. A player never, ever argues with his manager, not in front of the other players. Ever. So how do you think the fans will react? The fans, they'll be behind me. They know what's right. What about George? George? He's going to blame me. I mean, hey, I don't know anything about managing. But I'll take the heat for whatever the manager says. Thank God I'm a Christian. Christ got my mind right. Now, I won't fight the man. I'll do whatever they tell me to. Are you admitting that Billy was right? Did I say that? I'm just saying I'm here to play ball, nothing else. Did you loaf on that ball? Reg, come on, you either loafed or you didn't. Did you watch the damn game? I charged the ball. Now, if Martin feels I didn't hustle, then I'm sorry for him. What difference does it make? In this game, the manager's always right. I'm just a player. What do I know? But Billy had no right going after me like that. I mean, what did I do wrong? The man disgraced me on national television. Besides, with my bad arm, I'm not gonna take a chance firing to second to get Rice. So I threw home. I didn't want the run to score. I didn't even know you had a bad arm. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things you don't know. Like I've been getting cortisone shots since the spring. Bet you didn't know that. Because I'm not supposed to say anything about it, but it's true. Did Billy tell you not to say anything about that? How much pressure can one man take? And it's not just Martin, it's you guys too. Now the press keeps messing with me. I'll hit maybe 30 homers and we'll lose. You quit leaning on me, I'll hit 40 and we'll run away with the division. Anybody appreciate that? Hmm? Does anybody really appreciate who I am? You're just one of 25 guys. It's about time you learn that. You're not the whole ball club. A real leader does his leading on the field. I don't put up with no prima donnas. I played Rice deep, just like you told me to. When I saw that Randolph wasn't going to make the catch, I charged the ball like I always do. Boy, what you think you do and what my eyes tell me you do are two different things. What'd you just say? What? Did he just call me boy? Reggie. What are you talking about? No, 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 Gabe, this is exactly what I'm talking about. That right there is this right here. You see how they're restraining him? Hey, nobody's restraining me. Now, listen, you said I was an old man yesterday. Let's see how old I am today. Right, stop it. Billy didn't mean anything by that, and you know it. Sit down, Billy. Now, listen to me. Nobody is leaving this room until this thing gets resolved. What's that gonna do? Gabe, I just wanna play ball. Do my best for the team any way I know how. Now, if that means I gotta bust my ass for this guy, no matter how he treats me or what he tries to do to me, then I guess that's just what I'll have to do. Billy.
Reggie is a part of this ball club. And you're gonna have to accept that. Now, I don't expect you guys to become friends, but there'll be no more public displays. And somehow, some way, you're gonna have to learn to tolerate each other. Or certain decisions will have to be made. Excuse me. The Red Sox beat the Yankees 11 to one this afternoon, completing a three game sweep in which they hit an American League record 16 home runs in the series. You know I love this city, Milt. It's the greatest city in the world. And the fans, tremendous fans, with tremendous heart. So naturally, they're going to root for the underdog. But it's all a pose, Milt. If you knew, if you knew what Billy was actually like, look, that's another story for another day. The reason I'm calling you, and this is for you exclusively, let's just say on deep background for now, after what happened at Fenway, I'm going to have to let Billy go. I don't relish it, and I love the guy. But I'm on my way to Detroit. It's time to make a change. The Associated Press is reporting that George Steinbrenner will fire Billy Martin today in Detroit. Good morning, thank you. You tell Steinbrenner if he fires Billy, he can take my season tickets and shove them up. Good morning, in the New York Yankees. Fire Martin, who's gonna manage, Yogi? I mean, I like Yogi, but as a manager, forget about it. Good morning, the New York Yankees. George gets rid of Billy, and I start rooting for the Mets. You know who we ought to fire? He ought to fire himself. I'm not going right, to talk so to you about politics. Ask me a question about baseball. Ask me about Fisk or something. Well, I'll star my ass. How's that for a quote? George? George? Hey, Thurm, how are you? Listen to me. You fire Billy, me and Nettles will quit the team. What? I mean it, we'll both watch. George, 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 George there's been a lot of talk that you came into town to let Billy go. Is it true? <laughs> Billy Martin is a manager of the New York Yankees until he's not. Sorry, fellas, that's all I got for you right Come now. Come on, George. George. Is Martin fired or what? Yes or no, George? George. No. Don't say a word. It's already taken care of. Don't do it. It'll cause more problems than it'll solve. What, are you kidding me? I'm serious, George. You get rid of Martin now, everybody's gonna say it's my fault. I don't want that. I don't want it. No, I don't deserve it. Maybe it's nothing. It was the only job I ever wanted. Please, don't let me lose it now, Lord, please. No, I... I haven't always done right by you, but... Just don't let them take it away from me now. Please. Yes, I'll resign. You too? What the hell is wrong with you people? George, if you fire Martin now, the fans will hate you. The players will resent it. And everyone will think Jackson's running the team. I thought I could count on you, you know? I thought I could count on you when things got tough, but I can't, can I? First sign of heavy weather, you up and fail on me. It's not personal, George. I've been in this game for more than 40 years. I've been around ball clubs, good ball clubs. And when they implode, it's not pretty. Come in. Sit down, Billy. Okay. George.
tell me what I have to do. Maybe I should have controlled myself more, but I, I just can't go around patting someone on the back who doesn't deserve it. I let the action get away with dogging it. I lose my ball club. I know I got my guinea hump. See, if I fight with my mother, it doesn't mean I hate her. Even, even Jesus Christ had a temper. I mean, didn't he drive the money lenders out of the temple? I mean, not that I'm comparing myself to him or anything, but we're, we're made in his image after all. Billy, yeah. your behavior in Boston, unforgivable. Gabe Paul's just telling me all his years in baseball, never seen anything so unprofessional. What kills me, you're the best field manager in the game. But off the field, in the clubhouse, with the press, you badmouth the front office, you badmouth me personally. I ask you to be flexible about where you bat, Reggie, you defy me. What you did last year, good enough to win. Not good enough to repeat. You gotta work 10 times as hard to repeat. I don't see you doing that. Look, George, I know we got swept in Boston. But this team can win the pennant. If you let me manage the way I know how, I'll bring it home, I promise. I already got a pennant. I want a ring. I spent a lot of money putting these guys together, Billy. You can't get it done for me. I'm going to get someone who will. Am I gone? It's in Gabe's hands now. George, to me, please. Here we go. Hey, hey, Billy. Billy, you still with the club? Billy, what did you and George talk about, Billy? Beautiful day for a ball game, isn't it, fellas? Great to be back in Detroit, the automotive capital of the world. Is Billy fired, George? You know, next to ours, I always thought the Detroit fans were the best in baseball because they stuck to their club through a lot of lean years, and I respect that. Reg, get on over here. Come on, Reg, bring it in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to say how thrilled I am about how well my idea, my investment in Reg is paying off for New York City. And despite what some people are saying, he's a welcome addition to our ball club. Isn't that right, Billy? Now, if you ask me, do these two scrap? Of course they scrap. That's a winner's do. Battle. And in the crucible of competition, well, their feelings are likely to get the best of them. But there's nothing personal in it. Is there, fellas? Matter of fact, they're about to share a cab ride out to the ballpark right now. Because I'm in such a generous mood. Guess who's paying for the ride? Come on, fellas, here we go. We got that? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Tiger Stadium, my good man. And I want to see some change. guys on death row waiting execution. I bumped into Rizzuto the other day. He told me a very funny story about Frank Crissetti. <laughs> you know what I was wondering about? How come there's so many good Dago ball players out there? Of course, we take things personal. Huh. Now that's fast. Come on, Okay, fellas, let's bring it in. Let's take a knee. This is gonna be good. It's gonna be something. To begin with, I want everyone to know that we are a team first, individual second. Everyone in this room is very lucky. We are the New York Yankees. Now, there are people, outsiders, think they know us, think they know what makes us tick, what our weaknesses are. Well, to hell with them. They don't know. They try and pull us apart, but they can't. Because we are a family. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about Billy's future with the club. And after what happened in Boston, you can't blame me for thinking about making a change. But I know how important 
Billy has become to you guys. So, as head of this family, I have decided to give you your manager back. But he cannot do it alone. I need each and every one of you guys to give Billy 110% every day of every game, of every out, of every inning, of every play, every at bat, in every day of every game. Now let's go out there and let's be Yankees. Let's beat these guys, let's beat them for Billy. Tigers take on the Yanks here at Tiger Stadium tonight. Both teams coming off losses and both desperate in need of a win. Here's Billy Martin coming out of the business dugout and the crowd is getting to its feet. Giving Billy a standing ovation. Billy's been a longtime favorite here in Detroit and this has to be a reaction to reports from the press that Martin is about to be fired by Yankee owner George Steinbrenner. Wow, listen to this crowd. Super. Yeah, but will they respect in the morning? I must be really burning George's ass. The Yanks beat the Red Sox five to four to pull within two games of first place this afternoon. The Yanks would be up three games if Reggie was hitting. I don't follow baseball. Follow baseball, but he from Russia or something. It's boring. It's like watching grass grow. Hey, check this guy out. That son of Sam. I'm turning in my shield. <laughs> cheeseburger, cheeseburger. What's his name? Oh, uh, you mean Belushi. Oh, yeah, John Belushi. Yeah. I really love him. He's really funny. Oh, he's great. I like uh, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase, what kind of a name is that? I mean, it can't be his real name. No, it's probably one of them Hollywood jobs, you know. Who's it? Oh, who's caused this? Oh, it's my friend Ralph's. He went to Puerto Rico for a week. He said if I change the points and plugs, I can use it. Nice. All right, get in. Wow. So, uh, you want to go someplace? No, let's just, just stay here and talk. You know what? We shouldn't be doing this. Look, I'm not going to grab you or nothing. <laughs> mm. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> then what? Hello, son of Sam. Oh, right, son of Sam. I'm not afraid of him. I bet she's some kind of perf, you know, like he wears girls' clothes or something like that. Watch, it's all gonna come out after yeah, they get him. If they get him. You don't wear girls' clothes, do you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the time. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no. What? Catfish, gullet, figueroa. I mean, you know, what, what's daughter hasn't been hurt? George is always blaming Billy, and why is it always Billy's fault? Jeez, how many times I gotta tell you, I don't care. You know what? If I were running the Yankees, I'd hey, wait, wait, wait. Look at that. You want to roust them? I want to know what's in the bag. Shots fired. Intersection 211 Street and 45 Road. 
Please acknowledge. 109 Omega, unit 37, show responding. Copy that. The gunman fired four shots through the closed passenger side window of this car. The 44 caliber bullets wounded both the 17-year-old girl and her boyfriend. Like the previous victim, this girl had shoulder-length dark hair. Unlike many of the previous victims, this one lived. They've been looking for the 44 caliber killer for almost 11 months now, and Deputy Inspector Timothy Dowd thinks he struck again this morning. You sure it was our guy? Yeah. Jeans, denim shirt, stocky with curly hair. He fit Judy Placido's description. Not your fault, 1013. You had to go with it. He's the closest unit. The plastic bag of intravenous fluid was hung on the knob of a locker behind Sal Lupo's head. The needle was in his left wrist, and he stared down at it, his brown eyes smoldering. Lupo was angry and confused as he sat in a wheelchair in a wheelchair in a fourth floor room at Flushing Hospital yesterday and waited for the doctors to take him to the operating room. How's he getting his stuff? Breslin is cleaning our clock. I'm tired of it. So is Murdoch. Dunleavy! I'm putting you on Son of Sam. I live here in Queens, and I've thought about the 44 caliber killer. That's why usually I keep my hair up when I go out at night, especially when I'm sitting in parked cars. And most of the girls are wearing their hair up because they're afraid of the 44 caliber killer. So when my girlfriends and I go out at night, we all put our hair up. It was about this length, I cut it short because of the 44 caliber killer. Uh, I go to discotheques, but I'm still scared. We used to stay in front of my house and park, and, you know, and kiss goodnight, but we can't do that no more. There is a lot of crime here in New York, in any big city, and we just have to be really careful and watch ourselves. You know, when it's your time to go, you're gonna go. It wasn't me, you know. Everybody, everybody said it was, but it wasn't. What are we talking about, Billy? It was Bauer. Caught up with the guy in the john and decked him. But everybody at the Coca thought it was me. You ought to go to bed. They traded me. They traded me to Kansas City. Huh. For who? Nobody. Well, come on, Billy. The old man should have stuck up for me. Should have told Weiss to shove it, but he, he caved. I was a bad influence, Mr. George Weiss. <laughs> How can you be a bad influence on Six Pennant when it's in three seasons? I ruled with Rizzuto, Barra, and Mantle, and each of them won the MVP. If I ever led anyone astray, it was me. I mean, where, where is the poison? Aren't found? you where? Billy Martin? Yeah, I'm Billy Martin. What, you got something to say to me? Come on, take it easy, Billy. Don't I just give me the finger? I, I just wanted to tell you that I'm a, a, a big fan. A big fan? What are you drinking? Me? Uh, beer. I'm buying. Buy this man a beer. What's your name? Lance. Lance. Buy Lance a beer. Thanks. You see that? You see that? Yeah. I got the people on my side. You see that? Yeah, well, well drink up and let's get out of here. Yeah, that was what really pisses him off, that the people are on my side and burns his fat ass. They see right through him, phony. George the Third. Let's not talk about George again. Trying to bury me in detail. Well, you know, you could just bat Jackson fourth. It's not like it costs you anything. You're tempting for him, man. You're tempting for him. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know. Well, maybe I'm just looking out for you. Did though. I ask you for that, huh? Did I ask you to feel sorry for me? Hey, you want to keep your voice down? I don't need nothing from nobody. No, what you need is for me to get you out of here. I'd quit. Steve, Steve, call us a cab. I'd quit, Lance. I'd quit. I could. I would. Because I don't got a pot to piss in. I need the job, sir. I need the money. We know you're busy. Well, where am I gonna go, huh? I got no place to go. I'm a Yankee. I've been a Yankee all my life. What's he been, huh? Rich. He's not a Yankee. I am a Yankee. Notes, stats, 
ruined my life and health. I'm a Yankee. What for? I'm a Yankee, Thurman. I'm a Yankee. 